My guest tonight is a comedian and actress uh, who appeared on Better Call Saul and on Pop TV's Florida Girls. She's also the host of the hit podcast Scam Goddess, which is now part of the Team Coco podcast empire. Please welcome our good friend, very talented, Lacey Mosley. Lacey, how are you? I am good now. Obviously, you see I'm in a vehicle. <laughs> yes, I see this. Now, let me lay this out for our viewers. Um, we were supposed to do a very professional Zoom interview. I've been doing them with everybody. Uh, and then suddenly I have the scam expert on the show and I hear, oh, there's a problem with the Zoom. She doesn't have Wi-Fi. And the next thing I know, about half an hour later, you're in your car. This feels like a scam. This feels like I a scam to me. Honestly, it is, Conan. You know, my office is my car. This is where I do all of my business. <laughs> this, is, this is so <laughs> suspicious. If I swear to God, if I didn't know any better, I would say, oh, you're, you're somehow grifting me right now. That's what's happening. Just a little bit. I mean, Conan, I told you you could come to my office if we weren't social distancing and you'd be right here in the passenger seat. That's where, <laughs> that's where I do my paperwork. When I first heard about your podcast, I thought that you would be... I don't know, making fun of people that scam or putting them down. That is not the case. You have great respect for people who scam. You think it's an art, don't you? I do. I, it's, you're, these are con artistes. You know, I love robbery. I love fraud. I just don't want to see people get hurt. So if you're scamming the big bad guy or, you know, evil corporations, then I'm like totally on your side. But if okay. you're hurting people, I'm not into that. Like, so what you like, to be clear, is you like the good kind of fraud, the good kind of felony, the good kind of corrupt deception. That's the kind you like. Yes, and believe it or not, there is a good kind. I mean, our government is running so many scams on us. What is a parking ticket? You put your car somewhere and then some hustlers from the government take it away and make you pay to get it back. It's a scam. So you think all, anytime your car gets towed, you think that's a scam? Yes, it is robbery. And I've been towed 12 times and that is not an exaggeration. <laughs> you know what, I think there's a, I think there's a 50% chance you will get towed during this interview. We will see them first put a boot on your car and then you're going to get jacked up and you're going to be taken out, right? And you're just going to yes. keep you in the interview. I will. The car will be moving, but I will continue to do the interview. The car will be moving backwards and then you'll end the interview at an impound lot. So, you know, until you brought it up, I didn't think about it, but it is a perfect scam. They put a ticket on your car because they say what? They're going to clean the street? Mm hmm And then they take the car. Then you have to go and pay to get a car that you already own back. Yes. So it begins with the street cleaning. You think the street cleaning's a scam? It is. I've seen street. Okay, so I encourage people, especially in Los Angeles during COVID, when they stopped giving tickets for street cleaning, like, look outside. Is your street much dirtier? Is it? No. I don't think so. No. And I've seen street cleaners give tickets after the street cleaners already passed and clean the street. I'm like, no, that's not right. Like, right, right. They got to make that money. It's all a scam. Now, you see scams because of this is a passion of yours. You see them everywhere. Right? You see scams everywhere. You see scams when you go to church, I'm told. Yes, I go to a scam church uh, <laughs> that I love very much. Uh, like, for example, like there definitely has been like a sermon where our pastor will come out. I will not say his name because, child, I don't want to get in trouble. But they'll come out and they'll be like, hey, hello, congregation. Uh, I need y'all to pre order my book in his name. Amen. And you know, I pre ordered the book. Um, I also send my tithes via text and Venmo, and they remind me. Uh, yeah, so there's, you know, there is a VIP section. Oh, wait, you have a VIP section in your church? Yes. Is it, much, not... is it much nicer? Is it like a sports box at a stadium where you get to have free hot dogs and stuff? What's so great about the VIP section? Well, one, it's in the front and it's a pretty big church. Um, it's not, the seats aren't quite different. They just have like a little velvet rope to keep, you know, the normie Jesus folks out. Um, <laughs> and right now I do not sit in VIP at church, but it is a goal of mine. Okay, so basically, yeah, it doesn't feel like that's what Christ was all about, was let the, uh, the people that are paying the most come to the front. That, that doesn't quite seem like that was the message. You know, Jesus was turning water into wine. Some would say that's bottle service. And so... <laughs> 
you're right. He probably did have a bunch of scams going now that you think about it. You know, this guy's, he was dead, but now he's alive, Lazarus. Really? Okay, we have to look into that. A lot of questions we have for Jesus. And then he skips <laughs> town. He skips town right. and we haven't seen him. I'm curious about something. You are a single person. I'm mm -hmm. guessing you're using the dating apps as all single young people are these days. I'm yes. told. I go on them every <laughs> now and then and then my wife gets mad. So um, do you, because you are a suspicious person and your whole life is about uh, scams, you must have a heightened suspicion and, and sense of mistrust when you're on a dating app. You must. Uh, <laughs> you know, I actually like dating apps. I feel bad for men on dating apps because if you're under, like you don't have this problem, Conan, because you're so tall. But like, if you're under 5'9", you get swiped left on so much on dating apps. When in reality, if you met a man who was under 5'9 in real life and you liked his vibes and you liked him, you would not discriminate against his height. And um, I like to tell everybody that there's no such thing as 5'9". No one has ever been 5'9", no woman or man. It's right. a whole scam of a height. Um, uh -huh. You don't think I, you don't think there's anybody on earth who's five nine. No, there's not. There never has been. That, We've been that, lied to. That's a height that only exists on dating apps. Yes, it is an imagination. It is not real. But um, I'm five one, so I can date you know pretty much any height, being so close to the ground and always finding change. Okay, now I uh, I have met you in person, and um, you are a uh, you are a smaller petite person at five one, and I'm curious, was that something? you worried about when you were younger or did you make peace with that right away? Um, I've always loved being short and I was hoping that I would be short enough that I could get the government benefits. But by the time I was 18, unfortunately, I grew a little too tall. So that was disappointing <laughs> for me. Um, there are government benefits if you're under a certain height. Is that right? Yes, yes, there are. Okay. Um, so, you know, and, and, and obviously it's not right to scam, uh, you know, disabilities communities and things like that. But I thought I was legitimately going to be a part of it. Um, and I was bummed when I wasn't. So <laughs> <laughs> you, you got upset that you grew. OK. Yes. Um, OK. So describe how you find dating apps. How do you find them? You know, what is your process for finding a good dating app? I will, you know, when I'm looking for love, I'm looking for, you know, somebody who will cook dinner, you know, um, get my dry cleaning, uh, maybe organize uh, my receipts, uh, you know, every week. And, um, and as I started to say more, I was like, oh, I think I'm looking for an assistant, not a boyfriend. <laughs> hmm, but I am trying to scam a, a, a man into uh, being my assistant for love. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so that's basically <laughs> what we want. You want uh, maybe... There's two ways to go about it. You can find a, a man that you like and then try to convince him to do all those things, or you can hire a, a male assistant and just then start dating him. Oh, this is a good point. I can like, step into my office, and <laughs> which is my car. Yeah, I, I can see that, yeah. I heard you say once, and I don't understand this, you think virginity is a scam. Yeah. It's a patriarchal scam. It was just created so we would all feel bad about having sexual experiences or, or to control women. And so I always tell people that you can have your virginity back. It only costs $40 to me. Um, and then I will send you your V card. This goes for you too, Conan. I know you have a child, but that does not matter. You I, have two, I, have, I have two children, uh, but you know they're, they're still on the young side. I, and I lost my virginity very recently. It was uh, during Obama's sec <laughs> it was during Obama's second term, and I remember it very well. Term? Yeah, second term Obama. Yeah, I'm, so I waited. I I waited. Uh, I was a very good boy, um, or mentally ill. I don't know what the problem was, but I uh, know. Um, yeah, I. So so what you're saying is you're going to sell people for forty dollars. You'll sell them a card that restores them their virginity if that's what they want. Absolutely. Everyone can be a virgin again. And I want to make that happen. That's my gift to society. If they come across with the money. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your gift to society is something that you're going to try and make a lot of money out of. Okay. Well, is there such a thing as a free gift? You know, we always get something out of anything that we do, whether it be yeah. purely altruistic, you know. Yeah. So this, I, I get it. I get it. I get what you're saying. You're, what you're saying is that everything is, at the end of the day, some kind of a scam. Mm -hmm. Even if you're giving money to a charity, you get to feel good about yourself because you gave money to the charity. So 
in a way you're getting something out of it. Exactly. Okay. So the, yeah, you get the feel good. So there's really just truly not like an altruistic moment that doesn't give you something positive in return, whether it's a good feeling or encouragement, uh, you know, you still get something. So I get $40 and you get your virginity. Okay. All right. Well, I would like that card, please. I want my virginity back because I'll send that right over, Conan. Yeah. Thank you. It was the, it was the best uh, 42 years of my life. Yes. Come um, on back. I'll be in my <laughs> office on third street. Hey, so, you know, it's something we've talked about this, and I think you might have something. You say that anybody who works in Hollywood in entertainment is really part of a scam. You think of the course. whole town is a scam. Absolutely. We just get lucky if the scam that we're participating in turns out to be legitimate. You know how many dark alleyways I've gone down like, oh, I could get an audition or I could be killed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you're like, gotta see if there's an audition down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You, that was the most cheerful way anyone's ever said, or I could be killed. <laughs> or I could be killed. Uh, That's the like, spice of life in Hollywood. You just never know. <laughs> but the whole thing about, I mean, when you think about it, I remembered when I got started, you know, taking acting classes or improv classes and you have to pay. And then they tell you, you know what? You could use another round of classes. Mm -hmm. And you'd totally get the sense that, well, I'm getting stage time, but I'm actually also laying out cash. That's a little suspicious. It's a little bit multi-level marketing. Like you get to one level and they're like, oh, but wouldn't you like to know how to make believe an orange? You should take another improv class, you know? So yeah, right, right. it's, there's tears and stuff, but I love it. It's one of my favorite scams to get involved in. It's like a big scam where we all know that we're paying money to be seen on stage, but we've all accepted that we're yeah. being caught. And then what about, like you say, headshots, the whole idea of headshots, that whole industry of you got to get your headshot, you think that's a scam? Oh, headshots are definitely a scam. All you need to do to get into the headshot game is shoot one famous person or famous adjacent person and then use that picture till the wheels fall off. Uh, I once took photos with a photographer who took pictures of Denzel Washington's daughter. And I'm oh. like, ooh, this is very close to Denzel. <laughs> and that's so why you went with this photographer. Yes. And he had me out on the street in the middle of Brooklyn, dodging cars in between photos. And I just thought that that was normal. He didn't have a studio. He was like, much like I'm like, this is my office. He was like, this alleyway is my office. Now stand by those bricks, girl. Uh, <laughs> and did he even have a camera? Tell me he at least had a camera. He was doing a lot of this. Now that I think about it. <laughs> That's a giveaway that it's just that, yeah. The fact that no camera ever came out. <laughs> okay, what's your advice? If someone out there is watching right now and they aspire to be a scammer, what's your advice to them? Because you're such an expert. My advice is confidence is key. You know, every, if scammers have something that's so interesting to me, which is that they feel like they belong everywhere they go and they look like that way, they posture that way. And so I'm always telling people like, really fake it till you make it because nobody knows what they're doing out here. We're all just throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what sticks. So believe that you can scam, believe you can con, believe you can do robbery and you can do fraud. <laughs> a, that's the most inspirational speech I've heard in a long time. And I know that half the country is going to disagree with me, but I do think part of the secret formula for someone like Trump is he can see the results of an election and just with, look in the camera and say, nope, I won. I won. And uh, that's what's, and he believes it and he makes other people believe it. And then suddenly everyone around him is going, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he won. He's, he might be the best. He might be the He's best at this ever. He's one of the greatest, like when you're talking iconic con artists, like he's up there. That's the Mount Rushmore he needs to be on, Scam Rushmore. Uh, <laughs> and his face and that hair, come on, that hair is fraud. That hair oh, is robbery. Let's not go uh, after weird hair, okay? <laughs> that's, I sympathize with the man and trust me, that's been a big part of my con since day one, is what I do is I, a good con artist distracts. And so what I did is I distracted with this you hit and then with got the away with all kinds of bullshit in the meantime. That's how I made it. So yes. always distract. 
Conan, I love a good bayang. All right. I love a good bayang. And I will say that Trump, when I found out that they booked the uh, four seasons total landscaping, I for one didn't know if it was an accident because I was like, maybe they're trying to save some coins. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they did want to have it at the landscaping between the, the, the shop and the crematorium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They needed to make some money and uh, they figured uh, we'll get a lot of press for doing this. And it, so maybe that was a scam. Maybe that worked. Mm -hmm. It was cute. Um, well, listen, it's been very nice talking to you. Yes, yeah, so wonderful. Lovely talking to you. And I'm, I'm so glad that your uh, podcast uh, is, uh, is part of our, of our little Team Coco world because it's fantastic. Uh, Thank you. Can, you. you can listen to Lacey's podcast, Scam Goddess, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to um, meet Lacey, just look for her in her car. <laughs> That's where she does apparently interviews that's where you do your taxes that's where you that's where you meet uh, a potential date i think it all happens in the car right it does it's multifunctional and conan come by anytime to my office i'll usually be on third street <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll look for the plymouth valiant on third street and i love that as i do this interview people are just walking by this is going to be on national television people are just walking by your car you know what i mean be so great if you rolled down the window at one point and you ordered a hamburger just through the window. That would be fantastic. I'm sorry, Conan. My life is a scam. I don't want it to be this way, but it this is. This is perfect. You know what? When you think about it, this was an accident, but the fact that you couldn't get Wi-Fi and you're doing it from your car, for you, Lacey, and for what you're all about, it's perfect. It's perfection. So thank, thank you. you very much, and you take care of yourself, okay? You too, Conan. All right. <laughs> Why don't you have a nap now? Because I know you're sleeping in the back seat. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>